Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at um, basically selecting files, getting the user input to select files in a few different ways, and finally we're going to end up using uh, FZF, which is a fuzzy finder, which is a great little program uh, that I've been using a, in a lot of my projects lately, and I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on it in the future, so I thought I'd show a basic example of it here, um, and uh, it has a lot of benefits to it, and uh, it's uh, cross-platform, you can install it on Windows and whatnot as well. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we're going to write a script that converts given input files uh, into grayscale using image magic. So here's a list of JPEGs in this directory. Um, I can xdg open. xdg is a program that if you're using xorg that will open up whatever program uh, is the default program for the file type that you're giving it. So I can uh, give it this image and we'll open up in my photo in, uh, viewer and I can scroll through these photos. So yeah, we're going to be converting some of these to grayscale. Uh, and let's go ahead and I have three scripts here, so three different options of doing that. So the first one is 1.sh. Okay, we're giving it the shebang line here, then we're saying a variable for our output directory, then we're making that directory. I'm using the dash p option here, and I'll show you why. So if I was to make a directory and call it output, not a problem, but if I try running that command again, I'm going to get an error. The dash p option, one of the functions of it is it will uh, not create the file, the folder, if it already exists. So we don't have that issue. Um, we're then, after going to create that file, we're going to use this uh, double brackets and a dollar sign in here. What that does is it checks to see if the user gave an argument, in this case, a file name. If they did give it, then we're going to set the variable img to whatever file they've given. If it did not, that's what this uh, pipe pipe means, it's then going to use the read command to ask them for a file name. Then we'll echo out, what, echo out what file we're converting and we'll convert it into that directory. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So uh, 1.sh and if I give it a file name, so if I was to one, uh, give it this one file name, we'll run that, it converts it, I can then uh, xdg open from our output directory, that file, you can see it's been converted. I can also give xdg our directory and it will open up directory. And I want to point out, I don't know why this happens, but when I convert images to grayscale using image magic, the thumbnails still show up in color, but I can double click on this and show you that it is converted to grayscale. Not really sure why that happens. I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, okay, so that was option one, but what if we want, oh, left out part of the functionality of that. So we can give it a file name like we just did, or if we don't give it a file name, it will ask you to enter a file name, at which ca case we can enter a file name and it will convert it. Um, and remember, Image Magic automatically overrides any files if they already exist, so be careful with that. We're gonna look at our second option here. What if we wanna give more than one file input? So we're gonna do again, we're gonna set our output directory, make that directory. We're gonna to check to see if there's at least one argument. If there is, then we're gonna check all the arguments, all the files given and put them into a variable called images or IMGs. Or, uh, yeah, IMGs, IMGs. Um, if there isn't at least one given, then we will ask the user will prompt them to enter it again with the read command. At that point, I'm going to take those, and right now they're separated by spaces. I'm just converting those spaces to new line characters and using a while loop. There might be a better way to do that, but that's the way I'm going about it now. So we have a list of images. Then we're going to go through each one as an IMG and run the same commands as we did before. At the end, I added after they're all done, we'll open up that directory in whatever our default file browser is. So that's sh2 or 2.sh. Again, I can give it uh, one file name, like so, and it runs fine, opens that up, or I can give it multiple file names, and I can tab complete here and choose a file, I can tab complete again and, oops, choose another file name, and I'll do that, and it converts all three, again, uh, they're showing up in color in the thumbnails, but they are all converted to grayscale. Great, we can also say 2.sh and not give it a file, and I can paste in a file name and it works. Or I can give it no name there, and I can, with spaces, add in file names. That's great, but what would be nice 
is one, I could type and search. So all these name pretty much similar things, but let's say I had files uh, that have unique names. I can use fuzzy find or search them. It also prevents errors uh, on the user end of typing in file names that don't exist that can cause errors. So again, if I was to do this and I was to give it one of these file names, but then the next options, I just give it random stuff, we're gonna get a bunch of errors. It runs, it converts the one fine, but when we'll get errors because they don't exist. We can avoid that. Again, anytime I can, I avoid the user manually entering data. Uh, I like them to be able to select stuff from lists. So let's go ahead and look at our last piece of code here, which uses fuzzy finder, FCF. So again, same lines at the beginning, we have the shebang line saying this is a bash script. We're creating uh, a variable for our output directory, creating that directory, checking if there's at least one argument. If there is, then we're going to put all of those into a, uh, a variable called IMGs, just like we did in, in the last thing. But now instead of using the read command, which allows the user to manually type in a file name, we're going to list all the JPEG files and pipe that into FCF. And we could be done there and select one file. But we want to give them a prompt so they know what to do. Files, we can say whatever we want here. We can say select images, select files, whatever. And then we're using the dash M option. The dash M option allows them to pick more than one file or one more, one more, more than one item from the list using the tab key. And then the rest of the command is the same. So the only thing we really changed here is instead of using the read command, we're using FCF. So let's go ahead and quit out of that. That's called 100. Again, I can give it a couple of files here like so, and it works, opens up the directory. Or I can just say 100, and it's going to list all those JPEGs. You can see that there's nine of them. It lists it right here. We have our prompt saying files. I can start typing. I can type like uh, 2019. Now, this file here is the best match because it has 2019 in it. These other ones are showing up because they still have 2019. That's the fuzzy finder part of it. It's not looking for an exact match. It's looking for the closest matches and putting them in the proper order there. So now I can hit enter and we'll choose the one I'm on. Or well, let's go ahead and do that. So, okay, it converted the one. Now I'll run it again. And again, I can filter it. I can say 2019. But if I want to, I can go tab, 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 and select the ones I want. So I selected three of them there. You can see there's nine total. It's displaying five of those nine. And I've selected three of them. I hit enter, and it converts all three of those. Uh, and I can go ahead and run that. And I can just hit tab a bunch. Now I have all of them selected, and I can convert all of them. Again, the thumbnails are showing up in color for some reason, but the images are converted to grayscale. Uh, so that's just an option. Again, there's other options out there for this particular application uh, where we can actually display thumbnails and allow you to select those thumbnails. One of the benefits of this is um, we are not relying on any uh, graphical interface. At the end, we're opening up the image, the, the directory in XORG, but ignoring that, we can convert, select and convert them all uh, on a server where we're SSH into and we may not be forwarding X. So that's one of the benefits of this. But again, I try to avoid allowing a user to type in anything uh, that is going to be entered into the program when I can have them select from the list. And we're going to be using this a lot in future videos where we'll have lists of names. Uh, so for creating forms where you're selecting employees or customers, you don't want people typing names. For example, my name is Christopher. I usually go by Chris. Uh, and if we're going to be entering stuff into a database, we want to be consistent. We want to either always be Christopher or always be Chris. And I spell my name with a K. People, someone else typing my name might type with a CH. And then we're trying to search through database or our log files and things are inconsistent. We can be consistent by giving them a list of names that they can choose from rather than manually typing them in. Uh, so stuff like that. We're also going to look at creating menus so that you can select different items from menus that run different functions in our shell script. So we're going to be doing a lot of stuff like that in the future. But I thought this was a basic example. Uh, in the future, like I said, we're going to create one that has a menu. And the menu will allow you to uh, kind of do this where it converts grayscale. But the menu will allow you to select images and what you want to do to them. So maybe you want to scale them. Maybe you want to grayscale them. Maybe you want to send them into a, a sepia tone. So we're going to write a, a shell script that does all that with different functions, but the user will be able to select everything from a menu-based thing using FCF. And FCF is a small application. It's portable. There's a Windows compile for it. So uh, you can use it on a lot of different systems. I use it on my phone in uh, uh, 
Termux. Uh, makes it easier for me to select files instead of having to type everything out on a little keyboard. I can just click on an icon on my desktop. It can bring up a list of files and I can select from those. So it's a very useful program that runs on pretty much everything and um, makes things super duper nice and has lots of functionality that we just looked at some basic options of here. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to put a link to the, to the script, the final script in the uh, description of this video. I'll have it up on Pastebin. I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day. Filmsbychris.com, that's Chris with a K. Check out the links in the description for that, as well as links to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash 1000 I thank you for watching and for your support. Have a great day.